Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Hope you guys are all having a fantastic afternoon. Uh, in today's video, I would like to talk to you guys about 10 of the typical things that you would go through in order to land your very first job as an iOS engineer. So I know a lot of you guys are college students studying computer science, or perhaps you are someone that's looking to switch career paths into iOS engineering. So hopefully what I have to say in today's video will be helpful to you. Okay, so let's talk about the very first thing that you wanna do, and it is to find the right company that you think is the best fit for you. Uh, make sure you find a position that you think you'll stick at for at least a year or two. That's typically the right amount of time for your very first job. Now, in my experience, all of the jobs that I've gotten in the past were all found on Craigslist. Now, you can also try your luck on things like LinkedIn, Glassdoor, Stack Overflow Jobs, or even AngelList.co. So now that you've found a company that you really, really want to work for, you have to now provide a pretty good portfolio as well as a pretty polished resume. So my recommendation for the resume and the portfolio portion is to provide a lot of sample projects that demonstrate your ability to work on the same technologies that the company is working on. And this is almost always a good idea because employers want to know whether or not you're interested in their particular technology. Okay, so now that you've sent out your resume, you've sent out your portfolio, you're gonna have to wait a couple of days for the HR team or the hiring manager to give you a call just to verify that you are who you are and that you are someone that's easy to work with. Now that the company is able to determine that you are a potential candidate for the position, they're gonna set up a call with an engineer to give you your very first initial screening phone call. And in this phone call is where you're gonna be asked a couple of basic technical questions. Uh, if you're applying for an iOS job, they're probably gonna ask you things like, what is the difference between a UI table view versus a UI collection view? Uh, what are retain cycles? And other very basic fundamental iOS concepts. Okay, so assuming that you were able to pass those very, very basic technical questions, and also assuming that the engineer wants to work with you, they're now going to schedule an on-site interview where you get to officially meet the team. Okay, so now is the scariest part of the entire interview process where they're gonna ask you to solve a couple of very, very difficult whiteboarding problems kind of related to the company's technology. And they're also going to expect you to solve a couple of very complicated algorithm problem sets. All right, so moving on, and now that you've gone through the technical portion of the on-site interview, you can also expect to kind of receive a personal cultural fit interview as well. And the main reason why a lot of companies will do this is because they wanna make sure that you fit in with what the company values are. But to sort of wrap up the entire on-site interview process, typically a company will have either the VP of engineering, the CTO, or the CEO of the entire company meet with you for sort of a one-on-one -on -one informal interview. And the reason why companies do this is because the higher ups at the company, they want to sort of interview you. They want to sort of know that you are capable of programming. They wanna know that you have a lot of common sense and they wanna know that they can rely on you with the software of the company. So now that the entire interview process is over, you're gonna have to wait a couple of days for the HR department to either call you or most likely email you with an offer letter. And the offer letter is comprised of a couple of interesting bits of information. Uh, most notably is the starting salary, the benefits you'll receive from the company, such as the amount of PTO days you get, uh, amount of sick days, and the type of insurance that the company provides for you. And then lastly is the starting date for which you wanna begin your first day of employment for the company. So now you're met with the interesting decision of whether or not you want to continue interviewing with other companies or whether or not you want to start the salary negotiation process. One thing I do recommend about salary negotiation is that it's extremely helpful for you and beneficial for you if you have an offer from another company at hand. Okay, so now to successfully close off the entire loop to the interview process, you want to accept the job offer, and then you can also provide uh, whatever start date that works for you. Okay, so that's going to wrap it up for today's video. Uh, there is, however, one thing that I kind of left off today's list, and that's the fact that a lot of companies nowadays are also giving online coding interviews as well as the on-site technical interviews. And hopefully you enjoyed today's video. Make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel if you want more videos like this. That's going to be it for me. I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.